Hi everyone, so this is the video for the chapter on light for SEC2 science. So this video is particularly for note 7.1. Okay, so if you have your notes, you need to take it out to copy as you listen to this video. Any point in time, if you need to pause, you can pause. If you don't understand, you can just replay it just so that you understand. Okay, if you still do not understand, it is very okay. Just write down your questions or your notes, come to class, ask your teacher. Alright, so let's begin. So for 7.1, we are just recapping what you have learned in primary school on the properties of light, as well as uh, we're going to introduce uh, a mirror and ask you to learn about the characteristics of the image form in the mirror. Okay, so let's start the first one. So what do you know about light? So here in this case, we have a boy and a girl. In your notes also, you see this. Why is it that the boy can see the light, but the girl cannot see with a curved pipe? So this guy here with another curved pipe cannot see the light. Why is it so? Okay, it's the same reason as why you have shadows actually. So if you look at this, you have, uh, I found this cartoon online, it's quite cute. So you have this guy trying to put his right hand, put his left hand, the shadows follows. Of course, this doesn't really work out, but yeah, so why are shadows formed? Okay, shadows are formed because light travels in straight lines. You have learned this in primary school. Therefore, when light is being blocked uh, by an object, a shadow is actually formed. So here in this case, we have actually a shadow of that looks like a cow riding on a, a, a kick scooter. But what you have actually is three guys, a mic and uh, two soccer balls. Eh? So yeah, it's, it's quite fun to, to play with shadows also. Right. Um, so what do we know about light? So we cannot see, another property is that we cannot see things in the dark. So if you have a, at night, if you switch off your lights, you can't really see much. Why is it so? So it's because that light actually uh, needs to be reflected off an object into our eyes before we can see it. So here you need to fill up, reflected off an object and reaches our eyes before we can see it. So it needs to go through this process. So light doesn't come out from our eye, light actually gets bounced off into our eye, that's where we see things. Okay, in the study of light, we need to use something called a ray diagram. So a ray diagram is one that has, um, it's just something that we use to, to help us study light better. Okay, so here in this case, uh, it's just a thin line of light coming from source. We represent that with a light, with a line, and then with an arrow. So the arrow tells us where the light is actually going. So sometimes we have a bundle of light rays, we call it a beam of light. We have, let's say for example, three in the same direction, we call it, they are parallel. So we, this is a beam of light, parallel beam of light. Sometimes the light goes outwards, okay, it's a divergent. We call it divergent because it's fanning outwards. It means it's going outwards, okay. Sometimes the light is coming into a point, merging to a point, we call it convergent. So there are three possibilities, parallel, Divergent and convergent. Okay, so when do we see those three? So one example is when we have a torch light. The torch light actually shines light in the same direction. Of course, some torch light are even better now, they actually have a bit of diversion. But we want to consider a typical torch light that actually goes in the same direction, quite parallel. Then another example is when we use a divergent. So it lights here from the sun is a divergent, but actually light goes outwards. Okay. So other examples here includes the lighthouse. So it's also lighthouses, some lighthouses are actually parallel, but in this case we consider this lighthouse that is divergent. Okay. So it fans outwards and sometimes for the top spotlights that you use uh, for performances in concerts, those are what in parallel beams. So just like the torch, like they are parallel beams. Okay, so here's where I need to use the... Yeah, so you can see the light rays going this way. Next, you need to remember that light must be reflected off an object and reaches our eyes before we can see it. So if you have a torch, a candy and an eye here, you must make sure that you draw the light ray in the correct direction. It must come out, rebounds off, and then goes to your eye. We do not draw the light ray this direction, okay? You don't draw in the opposite direction, you don't draw the light ray coming out of the eye. Because light doesn't come out from our eye, it comes into our eyes. So this is just a picture to help you remember. 
Okay, light does not come out from our eyes. The only person that has light coming out from the eyes is actually Cyclops, which is a fictional character. Nobody has light coming out from our eyes. Okay, so just make sure you remember him, then you probably will remember how to draw the light rays. The next thing to know about light is the speed that it travels at. Okay, please take note that it travels at different speed as it goes through different medium. So in this case, I want to show you that for air, it's actually light travels the fastest, followed by water and glass. So here, if you see, it's 299 million meters per second. I say again, 299 million meters per second. This is very fast. At one second, it travels 3 million, 300 million, sorry, 300 million meters. Now compare that to sound. Sound only, for one second, it travels only 340 meters. That is a huge difference. So this is an example of why uh, this is the reason why when you see a lightning, right, you will see the light ray, the lightning come to your eye first before you hear the thunder. Because light travels much faster compared to sound. Okay? So do you know that light travels fastest in vacuum? So as you go back to the previous slide, you realize that light travels fastest in air. But light travels the fastest in vacuum. Okay, it travels at this speed, but we don't need you to remember this number. We just need to remember 300 million meters per second. 300 million meters per second. Okay? So according to theory, according to all the scientists like Albert Einstein here, the, it is, this is the fastest speed that any object can travel. Now this is quite interesting. If you are interested, you can actually read up more. But yes, this is the fastest speed any object can travel. So now we are moving on to the image characteristics, the characteristics of image formed by a mirror. This one you need to remember and memorize. Okay, so there are five different letters you remember. B, U, L, D, S. Okay, so let's go through one by one. The first thing you need to know about the image formed by a mirror it is virtual, which means that the image cannot be formed on a screen. Now, Okay, the opposite, the opposite of this is actually real, R-E-A-L, real, which means that the image can be formed on the screen. Let me show you this uh, illusion just to have an idea what virtual actually is. So here you have, uh, let me just pause soon. Okay, let me go back to here. So here you have a person lighting up a candle. Okay, the candle is actually here. This is actually a glass plane. There's a black paper covering this. There's a candle here. So the person is actually lighting the candle and you see the flame here. This is a glass plane. And then what you see is a reflection here. So watch what happens when I turn this, peep, uh, this machine here. So you see the candle. So as he turns the thing around, Now watch what happens. Oops, sorry, let me push it back a bit. Okay. So what you have here actually, just now when you're looking through this glass, you see the reflection of this candle flame. But what actually happens is that this flame has never been lit up. It's only this flame. But because of the reflection, you think that this candle is actually lit up. So this is an idea of virtual. That what you see in the mirror is not what that's really there. Okay, it cannot be formed on a screen. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. So yes, virtual means the image cannot be formed on the screen. Next, what is usually formed in a mirror, uh, in a, in a mirror is that it is usually upright. Okay, this is the opposite of upright, this is inverted. You don't see this in a mirror. If you stand in front of a mirror, your head will still be on top, your leg will still be at the bottom. So this is what happens. Okay, upright means the image is not vertically inverted. It is upright. Third is L, laterally inverted. What happens is, if you see this baby over here, she puts her right hand onto the mirror. And what happens? If you see the image, the image seems to be pushing, putting her left hand on the mirror. So when you raise your right hand, your image in the mirror appears to raise the left. This is called laterally inverted. Okay, the fourth characteristic is that it's the same distance. That means if the my object is let's say 3, 3 cm away from the mirror, my image will be 3 cm from the mirror. So I chose this picture because 
this baby is actually kissing, or this boy is actually kissing the, the, the glass, which is something like a mirror. And so if you see the image, the image is so touching the mirror as well. So the year, if you look at the year, the year is this distance from the mirror, and it's the same distance from the mirror. Okay, so this is what I mean by same distance. Every part is the same distance away from the mirror. The next thing is same size. S stands for same size. This means that the size of the image is the same as the size of the object. So this is not what you will see. A cat, you will not see a lion inside the, the mirror. So if a cat is only like probably this small, you will not see a huge thing inside. You will see the same size in the mirror. This is what I mean by same size. Okay, so you have covered the, all the five characteristics. V, U, L, D, S. Okay, virtual. Upright, laterally inverted, same size, same, sorry, same distance, same size. Okay, so I want you to try this. So this is some examples you can do at home and then bring to class to check your answer. This middle thing is my mirror. The line represents the front of the mirror. The slanted lines here represent the back of the mirror. Oops, sorry. Let me go up. Yes. So here, this is my object. My image will be here. The object is at the front of the mirror, the image is at the right of the mirror. So how would the object look like? What, how would the image look like? Will it be an upright T? Will it be an inverted T? Okay, I'll let you figure out and try to fill it in and then we go through in class. Same thing, we have a B here. If a B is an image here, what will it look like here? Will it be the same? Will it be laterally inverted? Will it be bigger or smaller or same size? Okay, the next one. This is a mirror, now it's horizontal. This is the front of the mirror, this is the back of the mirror. So this is the object, this is where the image will be at. So now, how will the image look like? Will it be A, B, C, D? Or will it be this side A, B, C, D? What do you think? Okay, let's figure out on your own. Next, please also fill up this one. True, false. T stands for true, F stands for false. So if you think this sentence is true, put a true. If you think it's false, put an F. So we'll go through this in class. Finally, okay, if you notice our ambulance vehicles, we usually have uh, the ambulance spelled in front. But you notice it's always laterally inverted. Why would I want to print this ambulance word this way? Why can't I print it like normal parts of the vehicle this way? Ambulance that can see it. Why must it be laterally inverted? Okay, write down your answer. We'll go through in class. Okay, so that's all for 7.1. So review through, look through again, make sure you understand. If you don't understand, bring your questions to class and we'll go through again. Alright, thank you. That's all we have for 7.1.